um, they, 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 they don't care. Uh, and if you ask them, they will tell you very various kinds of stories. But thank God for you that you don't tell this kind of stories. Amen. <laughs> thank God for you that you don't tell this kind of stories. You are very, very special people, very, very close to our hearts. We cherish, respect, and honor all of you. Thank God. We pray for you also that God will move you from 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 wherever, whatever, whether you are at H or I or F, wherever. But it's going to move you from one level to another every blessed day. Amen. I like us at this moment to, you know, pray a little bit, and then we we'll dive into um, what we are going to learn today. Uh, we'll be very, very, very snap short and. Uh, so that we can be able to, to, to go home. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this wonderful moment that we share fellowship, Father, with your children. This, Father, Lord, I don't take it for granted. These are your people, and I'm so special the way I handle things here. Father, Lord, I handle things with nitty-gritty, with all the respect of your word, knowing fully well, O oh God, that you honor your people with the highest honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Use me, Father Lord, that I will not make mistakes. Use me, Lord, that I will not derail any of your word. That I will speak but the engrafted word that comes directly from heaven. I open my spirit, man, O oh Father Lord, that you will, you will drop in something. That, O oh God, I will be able to hear directly from you and to tell your people what you deserve to what they deserve to hear in the name of Jesus. Bless somebody today here, O oh Father Lord, and move them forward in Jesus' mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Today, um, I want to look at what um, I, I've entitled, Why Should We Rise? Or Why Must You Rise and Shine? You know, these days we have been looking at rising and shining. We said we just passed this, the first quarter of 2024 we just passed the first quarter of 2024 and the first quarter of 2024 were january february and march and right now we are in april for some of us who are still sleeping as we are going to see in some of the scriptures um we are in april right now and april is already getting halfway um gone amen and we are saying that um there are, there are certain things that we entered into 2024 with, knowing fully well that we will soar like the eagle. But it may be that one or two things held us back. And so we are revisiting these promises that were made on the 31st. That we want to arise and we want to shine. And thank God that his word that is infallible, is also there to back us. It has made us understand that it is possible. Say it is possible. Oh, say it is possible. We have been dealing with Isaiah 60 as we fasted uh, when we enter into this second quarter of the year. The three days fasting. And that is, it is still carrying us on. This is a topic that it, 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 it is going to be hardly be exhausted. Because it has a lot in there. Amen. So we are going to look at arise. Why must we arise and why must we shine today? Is somebody ready to arise and shine? Yes, you are, you are ready to arise and shine because it is the will of the Lord that all of us arise and shine. We must arise and shine because the Bible let us understand that we are the light of the world. Now, if you don't arise and you don't shine, then you are not a light. What is a light meant for? I think that a light is meant to shine. In fact, light is shining. This light here is shining. If it is not shining, then it is not light. It has arisen because it is standing right here. And it is portraying that I am here. It is telling us. Now, the fact that it doesn't have any voice, but it is speaking yet. It is speaking. That here I am, and I am doing what? I am radiating and producing light in darkness. Now, you cannot really see the light because there is no darkness here today. But at least when you flat your eyes all around, you realize that there is something blinking, something on top of your head. Amen. So today we are going to look at what we call, um, why should we arise and why should we um, 
shine. You know, these two, these two uh, 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 words, arise and shine, is engraved in this scripture, Isaiah 60, verse 1. It is there. Because it is God's plan. He is letting us understand that we must get to that place where we arise and shine. Because it is his plan that we must get to that place where we arise and shine. And so that we must be able to actualize the transformation of our lives. We, 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 uh, you and me believe and we understand and we agree that it is his plan for us not to continuously, you know, be under there. His plan for us is that we should move forward. Amen. We have two main scriptures here for this um, preaching today. And the first one is taken from the, book, from the book of Proverbs 6, verse 9 to 11. Proverbs 6, verse 9 to 11. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6, verse 9 to 11. And the Bible says here, it says here that how long will you lie there? Now, is this scripture is, talking, is speaking boldly to you and me, co taking cognizance of the fact that you and me have been lying somewhere. Now, if he says that, how long, how long will you lie down there? It is not only talking of, about how long will you get up and go and do some work for Pharaoh. There are many things that you may lie down. You can be active, but yet you are lying down. Amen. You can be rolling up and down and yet you are not moving forward. You are still lying down. Because you need to come to that place where you understand that taking step, it is moving forward. Anytime you take one step, it is moving forward. It doesn't matter how small that step is. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When it talks about sluggard, it is not abusing you. I mean, it is abusing those areas of our lives, maybe processes and procedures that we have not been able to, co to, to, to coherent, to get into it and push it forward. When it talks about slogan, slogan is something kind of being lazy. You are lazy in that area. I know you are a very busy pe pe person. All of you are busy people. But we have areas in our lives also that we are slogan. We are lazy about it. I'm sure I have weaknesses in the house. I also have my own area that I'm, 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 I'm lazy about it. Sluggard about it. And sometimes we get to this place where we procrastinate. Today, we say we will do it in the evening. And when the evening comes, we say tomorrow morning, we are going to accomplish this assignment. And when tomorrow morning comes, we say no, it is in the afternoon. You see, we give lazy and some kind of excuses to especially people who are around us to be able to let them understand that this is not our responsibility. When you give excuses of that magnitude, you take responsibility out of yourself and you put it somewhere. That on itself, it is irresponsibility. It's quiet. Amen. But I'm speaking the truth. I think this is the truth. I'm not here to challenge you that, that much. I'm, I'm here to encourage somebody. Yeah? That's what, there are areas in our lives that they are going down, 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 down because we don't pay attention on. We are not focusing on. So they are going deeper and deeper. And at one point in time, they will disappear without us knowing. Oh yes, anything you don't pay attention to, that thing will disappear. So the Bible says here that when will you get up from your sleep? You are sleeping in that area. So he's asking you, when will you get up? You are here. You have gotten up to the fact that you have to be amongst brethren. You have gotten up. You have this, 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 this knowledge and the awareness that you have to be amongst the saints according to, your, according to the word of God in Hebrews 10.25. This is very, very true and it is correct. But when you scan all around and you do 380 degrees around your life, you realize that there are some places where you still sleep. There are some areas where you sluggard about it. Sometimes when we talk about sleeping, it is not because you don't know. There are many things you know and you are able to do it. But there are others that you don't know until somebody taps you and reminds you, oh, look at this, look at this. And for your information, these are things and information that so many people don't want it. They don't want somebody to remind you or to let you understand that there is a place where you are sluggard at. There is a place in your life where you are sleeping on. 
Oh, I've come today to remind somebody that the Lord is calling you and me that we must arise and we must shine, even in those areas. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a challenge for us to look at in our lives, pick the pieces and the bits that scatter sometimes and put them together. See if we can find a direction to it. Go and scan those places where I was telling some people, where, 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 ah, okay, it was Bible studies. Where there was one man, this one man, this man said, the greatest pollution that will ever happen on earth is when all believers, they go to their shelves and pick up their Bible and dust them. The whole place, the whole world will be, will be dusty. Dust will cover the whole place. What is he saying? He's saying that believers, they sleep on the scriptures. They are sleeping. Literally, it, is not, it doesn't mean that you are word, the word of God here. Yeah, this one, you don't have dust on it. Until you use a microscope, you will find a dust there. But then, it doesn't mean that believers are not using their Bible. Or they don't, some people, they put it under their pillows and sleep on them. You are still sleeping on it. Ladies and gentlemen, you are sluggard in that area. God is calling you and me that we must arise. And then we must shine. That light... In fact, arising is not enough. When you arise, you must shine. It's like somebody who is sleeping. You get to, you call somebody in the morning. You feel the voice. You ask, are you still sleeping? The person says, no, I'm awake. But I'm still in bed. The person has arisen. The person is up. But the person is not yet shining. Amen? May you not only arise, but... May you also shine. Amen. I say, may you also shine. Amen. Amen. So the Bible, it continues to say, verse 10, a little sleep. Roti kataya A little sleep. It is it, not saying that you should not sleep. Or oh, it is not saying that you should, because it, it, when we read this scripture, we say, oh, a little, what does the Bible mean? That I should not sleep. You say, a little sleep. What does, so I should not rest. You see, we have some people who fight again. They fight the scriptures. And what I just did is what they do. Then they will be questioning and questioning. And if they have that boldness to call the man of God, oh, I just read the scripture. What is your God saying? You see, your, your God means that I should, not, I, I should not, so I should die? This is not what the scripture is saying. When it talks about this a little sleep, an extension of your rest, which means, According to what I understand, God has given us 24 hours a day. Amen. And it is calculated like this. Eight hours to sleep. For those young ones who are still very, very young, their bones are still young. Eight hours to sleep. Eight hours to work. And then eight hours in between. Eating, bathing, going to, 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 to work, and those kind of stuff. They cover that. But when you are sleeping 10 hours, you are sleeping 11 hours. This is a little sleep there. 8 minus 11 is 3. 8 minus 10 is 2. 8 minus 9 is 1. 8 minus 8.5 is half an hour. This is a little sleep that scripture is reminding you. So when you sleep like this, a little sleep, it costs something that we are going to see. Now, remember, do you know the difference between, now, let me say this, time is the greatest commodity that the Lord has given to us. Amen. Amen? Time is the greatest commodity that the Lord has given to us. Very valuable. So, the children of Issachar says, the Bible says about them, the children of Issachar, they were wise. They knew their time. And they knew even how to apply those times according to the dispensation that they find themselves. So the difference between a rich man and a poor man, it lies on the time. It, the difference between a careless person and a person who comports themselves, it lies in time. The reason why it lies in time, because time matters. At the end, it is time that is going to tell. That is the reason why I cannot evaluate. I cannot see uh, 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 Israel. I begin to say, why is Israel does not know two, 2 plus 2? Why does Israel does not know uh, 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 10 plus 10? Why? No, because time will tell. 
time will tell. If he, give, if he gives himself to that time, I tell you, 15 years, the man will be solving mathematics and is solving algebra and all kinds of stuff. So it is, it is time that differentiate, that moves us from one level to another. Time affects our lives. Amen. So a little slumber, a little folding of hands to rest. These are the times that we don't need to rest. But yet, we rest. Can you imagine you need to go to work? You sleep and you say, oh, I'm tired. My bones are itching. Uh, let me rest again. And sometimes, some of us, we put the alarm. And when the alarm rings, that this is the time we need to go to work. We just stretch forth our hands. Peep. We pluck it off. Don't disturb. Thinking in our head that I want to just relax a little bit. Before you notice, three hours has passed. And you jump out, out of sleep. When you jump out, out of sleep, you remember, oh, I am late. That sleep that you jump out suddenly is already giving you a headache. Because human beings were not made like that. You cannot just jump out of sleep like that. You must rest a little bit, and then you get up. But you jump out of sleep, it gives you a headache. Secondly, you go work, you go, you go late to work. Amen. This is the trick of the enemy. It is holding you back so that you will not get to the place where you're supposed to be. Amen. Now, it is not only about mature people. Even students, people who are learning, like the little ones also. That is why when you will get them up, they begin to cry. When they cry, you, you, you sympathize with them. Oh, yeah, you just go and sleep. Go and sleep back. Go and, you are killing that, that child. You are killing that child. The child has to back, carry the backpack. Oh, it's crying on the way. We are going. <laughs> oh, yes, we are going. No, 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 we are going. You realize that before they get to the campus, the tears are wiped off and they begin to jubilate with the friends that they see. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. It says, a little fold, folding of, of the hands to rest. Verse 11, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. A thief and an armed robber. It doesn't tell you when it's coming. It suppresses you. Before you notice it has cleaned the whole of your house. Sometimes the armed robbers, they come, they even kill you. They come with trucks and sweep your house, everything that is there, and put it on the, on the truck and drive them away. So it is, God is comparing a little slumber, a little folding of hands, a, look, a little sluggardness to an armed robber. Armed robber does not have pity. It is any armed robber or a thief is being ruled and controlled by the devil. Yes. Because why should human beings that have senses do us all this kind of stuff? Okay, let us jump now to Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 7. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, Arise, and it says, Shine. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee say the lord shall arise upon me oh shout it the lord shall arise upon me and his glory shall be seen upon thee verse 3 and the gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of the rising verse 4 lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together they come to thee that thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side verse 5 then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Epha. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold. They shall bring incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up 
with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a very, very powerful scripture. It is letting us understand that you will arise and you will shine. The reason why you will arise and you will shine is because the glory of the Lord has risen upon somebody. If it is you, say hallelujah. Because it has risen upon somebody. Amen. Now, Isaiah is very, very interesting. This man is a prophet. Or was a prophet, if you want. He is someone who has been prophesied. And this is what some of the very true prophets that were in Israel at that time. We know we had fake prophets. But Isaiah was a real one. He prophesied so many things. Things that are going to befall the people of Israel because of their nonsensities that they are doing. He prophesied also about good things. Amen. Arise and shine. He prophesied so many things. He prophesied about the imminent wrath that is supposed to come. He prophesied about judgment. He prophesied about the punishment of God. This will come on the people as a result of their, what? their disobedience. Anytime we disobey God, we should be ready for his judgment and his punishment. Nowadays, because God does not act as he used to act in the Old Testament, we look, we do things anywhere, and some people with their smelling mouth, they even say that, I will do this thing. Let God send his hand and slap me, let me see. And in fact, we have seen testimonies, and we have seen videos of people who they spoke and it happened. God did it. God killed them because of what they have, the nonsense that they are doing. So because of disobedience, they, they, they disobey his laws. And in particular, there were prophecies about various woes and unfaithfulness of the people, the same people that he created and he called them my own people. They were unfaithful. They disobeyed God in his face. In that, in that sense, we say they spit at God's face or they, they, they lay a slap on his face. God will not watch this. But against all these backdrops of this downcast and dejected, dejectedness and depression, Isaiah also pronounced some blessings upon his people. Hallelujah. People who had a contrite spirit. People who, after they realized what they had done, they repented. People who, after their mess, they went back to God in humility. Isaiah also has something to tell them. In this very, very scripture that we are reading. The Lord is my light. Amen. In this scripture, he pronounced and promises, promised them the blessing of the Lord that he will make you rich and he will add no sorrow. Because he is saying that he, you guys, all of you, will have to increase in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. God can make things arise. It doesn't matter whether you have been in those decadence of the children of Israel in those times where they spat at God's face, they slapped him in anything that they do, they disobeyed, and they were faithless people. God changes things. He can bring you to a place where he will pick you up again from the mighty clay. And then you will arise again and you will be shining again. Like that bright light that he promised in his word. Hallelujah. Is your marriage in a mess? God is ready to arise in that marriage and to make that marriage to shine. Are your finances actually failing? God is ready to turn all the red spots in your finances into green again one more time. Is your spiritual life sliding down the hill? Oh, God is rising up today to somebody and is sparking up their spiritual life again one more time. Are you facing darkness with respect to your career? Everywhere you go, you say the people all around you, they don't want you, they don't like you, they hate you. I tell you, when you arise, when God arise and shine, his glory will be upon you that when you go back to wherever you are, amongst those people that they hate you, those ones will, will become the best of your friends. And they will speak for you. Oh, Karo Kata Yabasaka. So the Bible says, he who delights in the Lord, he will cause even your own enemies to be at peace. To be at peace. To be at peace. To be at peace with somebody. Say, I am at peace with my enemies. Are you facing darkness with respect to your children? Are they going down in slums? God is telling somebody, don't worry. I am with you. 
and all is okay. Amen. What about your ac academics? You do all you can. You work hard. But at the end, you are at the bottom. You come the last. God is telling somebody that I am arising in, on your behalf. And I am giving you pure and sound wisdom. That, that is not of men, but it's of God. Hallelujah. That when you read a little, you will understand this much. Amen. The Lord is coming to somebody today. The Lord is rising up upon somebody's case. In the name of Jesus. You must say yes to this. Say I can. Because the Lord has spoken it in his word. Amen. That it is possible. With God all things are possible. Why must you arise? And why must you shine? We embark on a strategy like this. Because there are things that we must come to a place where our heart must be convicted. Anytime we are not convicted, we are not able to do anything that the Lord asks us to do. We are, if Unless we are convicted, that is why the word of God must convict us. If you are not convicted, it means you are only pretending. Conviction comes from the heart and not from the flesh. It is not even from the mind. It is from the depth of your heart where somebody will tell you, you have slumped into godly sorrow. The godly sorrow is the one where God has touched your heart. It's not out of pretense. It's not the one where people, they force you and they put pressure upon you. And then you begin to, you know, obey. But if you are not convicted, there are many things that are not doable in your life. Amen. So we want to share four reasons why you must arise and you must shine. Number one. Say it is a law. It is a law. The first two words in this scripture, it talks about arise and shine. Say I will arise. Say I will shine. Amen. May you arise and may you shine. In the name of Jesus. So it is saying that God is commanding us to do that. It's not a suggestion. It's not in the scripture that it's an op opinion. No. No. It's not an advice that God is saying, may you, maybe if you want. It's not even a dream. But it is something that God has commanded us to do. So therefore, God's commands are always what? They are perfect. And if we follow his commands and we follow God's word, we will not miss it. If we follow God's command and follow his words, we will not be disappointed. In fact, if we follow his words and follow his commands, we will not be disgraced. Amen. May your face shine and may your faces not be covered with shame. Amen. Hallelujah. May the glory of the Lord shine upon you. Amen. His words, his commands, they are perfect. As it is engraved in Psalms 19 verse 7. The Bible says here, the law of the Lord is perfect. Amen. It says, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. If it talks about making wise the simple, he's saying that making the dull to become very, very sensible, very, very knowledgeable. There are some times that we don't learn anything. And if we don't learn anything, you don't expect to be very, very wise. We know we have wise people. We have wise people. When, when we talk about wise, wise has nothing to do with academic knowledge. It has nothing to, we have people who they, they cannot read A and B. They have never been in the four walls of a nursing school. And yet, they are very wise people. Very wise. They know how to do things. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is putting knowledge into practice. And things are working. You know that you can have knowledge, but you don't have wisdom. And if you have knowledge, you don't have wisdom, nothing works. The knowledge remains here and is not practiced. It's not practiced. It's not put into action. And anything that is not put, is not put into... Remember... All things are not spiritual. It is not only spiritual, spiritual. Because we live in, in, a, in a physical world, things must become actionable. Things must become physical. And it is a spiritual knowledge that God has given you. You call things that be not as though they were. And so shall they be. That even the physical eyes can behold them and feel and touch. This is what we are talking about. It is not only his grace, so it's the spirit. It's the spirit is a spirit. No, we must convey it from the spirit, from the spiritual world, 
Because the Lord, it, it, it makes it very, very clear. He said, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Isn't it? But have you not seen people who they are, I mean, staunch, if I can use this word, believers, born again Christians, tongue talking, blood bought, spirit filled, I mean, non pretending, but yet they are poor. Yes. They are poor in physical things, but they are, poor, they are rich in spiritual things. But you know, we live in a, spirit, in a, in a physical world. And we cannot, we cannot deny the fact that we are not living here. We need physical things to be able to put soul, body, and spirit together. Or otherwise, one will say, oh yeah, I'm gone. Hmm? Yes, of course. We will say, oh yeah. And when you say, oh yeah, one says, oh yeah. Oh, once say I'm gone, then it scatters the whole bond. Amen. So the, the next scripture here, the scripture that says, um, Psalms 19 verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. Say the law of the Lord is perfect. Yeah, God's word is perfect. It means that it is without blemish or spot. It is infallible. The infallibility of the word, it is it, it can be challenged, but you cannot change it. If you care, you change it. But the word of God still remains the same. It still has its influence. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is the anvil on which life is beaten. So it can become pure life. So life can have some direction. Amen. Whatever the word of God is, it says that it settled the matter. The command of God, when he releases it, he settles the matter. Psalms 119, verse 89. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The word of God is settled in heaven. It is unshakable. His words, the Bible says, they are yea and they are amen. Hallelujah. Very powerful. They are yea and they are amen. It means it doesn't matter what you do. It remains the same. Hallelujah. God has spoken his word that you should arise and you should shine. So you need, you need something positive in your life. Thank God that arise and shine, they are not negative words. They are positive words that when we arise and we shine, we move our lives forward. And the devil cannot do anything about that. The devil cannot change anything about that. The devil cannot attempt to pull you back. If God be for you, no one can be against you. Amen. Amen. Number two. It is of the Lord. Say it is of the Lord. Why must we arise and why must we shine? Because it is of the Lord. The validity of, this, of a statement or a command depends on the author of that statement. Do you know that? Now, I can say something here. It will have effect on some people. If, for example, Derek says something. Nobody will listen to him. Hallelujah. It will be difficult before somebody listens to him. So the validity of a command or word that comes depends on who that word comes from. So the Bible says that a poor man, his own advice, his wisdom, sometimes they are also very, very wise, these poor people. But when they give their advices, all their wisdom, they throw it at the gate of the city. These elders, because the man is poor, they say, get out. When you, they look at you, you are poor, they, they, they believe also that your own, what comes out of your mouth is the same like you. It's the same like you yourself. So the word, the validity of somebody's statement. But this statement we are talking about, arise and shine. It is coming from the Almighty. It is coming from Jehovah. It is coming from the creator of heavens and earth. The God who made you and made me. This powerful, omnipotent, hallelujah, is coming from him. So he is able to perform his word. For the Lord speaks and he says, I will speak and the word that I speak shall come to pass. In Ezekiel 12, verse 25, he says, for I am the Lord. He is he's proud to say I'm the Lord because he knows that he has exalted his own word even more than his holy name. And his words are powerful. They don't just fall on the ground and get rotten. No, 
He says that when I send my word, they don't return to me void, but they accomplish the purpose for which I send them. And he only don't end, it doesn't end, end there. And he says that they will prosper thereby. Amen. Has God sent his word to you? Oh, yes. And if he has sent that word to you, that word will prosper. That word will not come, go back to him empty-handed. But it will show results. This is what I've accomplished upon the life of that one that you sent me to. Amen. So he says, for I am the Lord, I will speak. And the word that I speak, that I shall speak, shall come to pass. It shall no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, said the Lord. That is Ezekiel 12, verse 25. Amen. The Lord who commands you to arise and to shine, he himself will make that happen. I say he will make that happen. Amen. Somebody didn't get this well. I say he will make that happen Amen. in your life. Amen. Amen. Let us look at Psalms 89, verse 35 to, 4, to, to, to 35. Verse 34 to 35. He says, my covenant I will not break. These are still the validity that we are still trying to zero in and to implant in and put some foundation, strong foundation over the, the proclamation that the validity of a word depends on the, on the author. And he's saying that my covenant I will not break. Neither will I alter any word that has proceeded out of my, my lips. He is the one who said that if I said it, I will make sure that it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Say, God will make sure I arise and I shine. Oh, yes, he will make sure that you arise and you shine. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody receive it. Amen. Number three, the Lord is the light. Katoyi kataya. The Lord is the light. Now, in Isaiah 60, as we read to 7, it's 1 to 7, it says the main reason even why you must arise and shine is because what? Your light has come. Amen. Because your light has come. And who is that light? The light, of course, is Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ illuminates your life, your life, there is no darkness that is going to come from any pit that will be able to dull your life or darken your life again one more time. Yes, because he is the one. That is, that is the reason why we must arise and we must shine. Arise and shine. In Isaiah 1, Isaiah 60 verse 1, it is the Lord that is affecting this. The light refers to the Messiah. We are talking about Christ, the son of the living God. And in Malachi 4 verse 6, it refers to him as the son of righteousness. He is the son of righteousness. There is no other, no person on earth, no one in heaven, no one beneath the earth that can compare their righteousness with that of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ aptly described himself as the light of the world. Two times in the scriptures. Number one, in John 8 verse 12, he says here, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have what? The light of life. So if we, we follow Jesus, as for our eyes and shining, that one will be the, the, the byproduct of following Jesus. Amen. So we will not even need to, to call any arise and shine. Arising and shining is following Jesus because he is the light. Let us look at the second scripture. The second scripture is taken from the book of John 9, verse 5. The Bible says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus Christ is in the world, and he is the light of the world. If he lives in you, then he is the light of your life. You must arise, and you must shine. Amen. Because where Jesus, wherever he illuminates his light, darkness runs away. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen anywhere that darkness is fighting with light? It is only these crazy things that used to happen sometimes where they say, you see how many years? Eclipse. They say eclipse. Very soon, some things will come and cover the sun. And, <laughs> and then dark, darkness will fall upon the earth. Karo basataya. Amen. But now remember, it happens there. 
It is only telling us that the fact that the light is shining, he is shining the light in our lives. We too, we can also use our own hands to block that light. May you not block the light of Jesus. May you arise and may you shine. Amen. So he radiates his light unto us. And when he radiates that light unto us, we cannot do otherwise but shine. May the rays of the light of Jesus Christ fall upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take the last one. Number four. It is a sign of life. Number four. It is a sign of life. Do you know when the Bible tells us that arise and shine, it's not talking to dead things. <laughs> the stones cannot arise and they cannot shine. Especially the creature, the main creature of the Most High God. Who, who are you and Abi? He says that arise and shine. He is talking to human beings, to homo sapiens. He's not talking to animals. He's not talking to trees. He's not talking to stones. He's not talking to rivers. He means business with you and with me. And he's saying that arise and shine. Because dead things cannot rise. Dead things cannot shine. It's only you who can listen to this word, engrafted word of God, arise and shine. In Isaiah 38, Verse 18 to 19. The Bible says, For the grave cannot praise thee. Yes, the dead man cannot arise and he cannot shine. He cannot give glory to the Lord. He cannot lift up their hands and lift and, and raise their hands unto the Lord and praise him unto the, uh, and give praises unto the Lord. A dead man cannot do that because they are under the grave. This is what Isaiah is trying to let us understand. And he says, he continued to say, He said, Death cannot celebrate thee. It means that he cannot celebrate God. 19, the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. Is somebody praising the Lord? Are you arising and shining not only in your own personal businesses, not only in their own, your own personal things that you do that have to do with remains and food, but do you take time to praise the Lord? Amen. Do you take time to praise him according to the scriptures? Here the last phrase. Of, of Psalms also alludes and he says that let in Psalms 150 verse 6 he says let everything that has breath have you read that scripture before yes I've read the scripture before let everything that has breath do what praise the Lord praise ye the Lord amen so as long as you are alive the potential of praising the Lord and arising and unsigning is in you whether you like it or yes, God has placed it in you. There are times where we deny the fact. It doesn't mean that it is not there. Yes. Now, people, there are many people who say that there is no God. Is it true that there is no God? Oh, they have the right of their opinions. And they move around and talking, going to loudspeaker and preaching and talking things. There are no God. There is no God. Everything, people, the other people are fooling other people. But this is actually not true. It is very, very clear that there is God. So their opinion will not defile the fact or will, not will, will, or will dethrone God from his throne. And say, calm down. We will kill you because we have proclaimed that there is no God. And so there is no God. This is the lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Yes. So that is the truth. So as long as you are alive, the potential to praise the Lord is in us. Amen. All you have to do is praise God and you will shine. Oh yes, all you have to do. Because let us look at Psalms 67 verse 5 to 6. It says, let the people praise thee. It doesn't end there. It says, oh God, let all the people praise thee. Verse 6, this is the key. Then shall the earth yield her increase. So it means that when the people they praise God, before the earth shall heal their increase. This is a process. You cannot go and start from the, from the back and you, 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 you expect to complete it. No, it is not going to finish. You cannot have water in your house if you don't go and fetch water or you don't tap it to come to your place. You just expect to have water. It doesn't work. You must first of all go and look for pipes. And look for where the source of water is. And you tap it. So it says, let all the people praise thee. De then shall the earth yield her increase. 
It is not the other way around. That we are waiting first for the earth to heal its, its increase. And then that is the time we will praise God. This is not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is saying that uh, praising God is paramount. Or yielding increase is paramount to praising God. It means if you praise God, ask for the yielding of increase is the end product. It will just come just like that. Amen? Amen. And God, even our own God, shall bless thee. Amen. The blessing of God can make you arise and to shine. Amen. Let us be on our feet. Put your hands together and be on your feet. And please, as you put your hands together, say this with me. I will arise and I will, I will shine. Say, I will arise and I will shine because it is a law. I will arise I will shine. Because it is of the Lord. I will arise and I will shine. Because it is a sign of life. Say it is possible. Say I am doing it. Call your name. Say Isaac. <laughs> Call your name. Say Isaac. Will continue to rise. Will continue to shine. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Lift up your voice. And take it in. Oh, lift up your voice and absorb it. Lift up your voice and consume it. In the name of Jesus. It's possible. Don't say it's not possible. Say, don't say, as for me, I can't arise. Don't say, as for me, I can't shine. It is possible. You are not a man at the, at the, at the, at the Bethesda pool. You have two legs and you have two eyes. You have two hands and you have everything that it takes it is to possible. arise. And to shine. Arise, the shine. potential to arise is possible. And to shine. It is, is possible. In, in the mighty possible. name of Jesus. I will arise. I will shine. Take it in. It is possible. Accept it. I will arise. Because it is of the Lord. I will shine. In the name of Jesus. It is possible. It is possible. It is a law. It is possible. It is not a suggestion. Apata. It is not an opinion. Arise. It is I of the shine. Lord. Because he is powerful. It is possible. If he says so, it is possible. It will come to pass. And we are The Lord is the light. I will shine. And no one can deny it that. It is possible. It is a sign of it life. It is possible. As long as you live, and we are you can arise and you can shine. I will shine. Arise and shine. I will shine. For the glory of the Lord. On every area is upon you. Of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will arise. Lift up your hands. From the rise. In of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed from the rising, from the rising of the sun. Sing it as you mean it. To the setting of the same, yeah, your name is to be hallowed. Sing Maduna May you arise and may you shine. Lift up your hands. May you arise and may you shine. This is the word of the Lord upon your life today. Because it is a law. It is not a it is not a suggestion. Arise and shine. Because the Lord is with you. Arise and shine. Because it is of the Lord. Arise and shine. Because the Lord himself is the light upon your life. You have the potential to arise. And you have the potential to shine. Because you live, you must arise. And you must shine. The Lord is commanding somebody to arise. And somebody to shine. In that area. There are areas that are dark in our lives. The Lord is arising in that area. The Lord is causing you to shine in that area. May you shine not only in your area, but may you shine in other people's area. May you shine in somebody's area. In the name of Jesus. When you shine, hold somebody's hand to the light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your hands one more time. 
we praise you and we honor you thank you oh god for this ones thank you for the word that they have absorbed in their spirit in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray oh god that they will grow in this in jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen, amen. hallelujah amen. amen we are going to take our declarations very soon but before we do that let us share the grace and the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen put your hands upon your head and say isaac amen. call your name isaac surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen, amen. hallelujah amen. let us receive the benediction and now may the lord bless you amen. may the lord lift you up high amen. may the lord lift up his countenance upon you amen. may the lord give you peace that peace that is everlasting amen. may he take every weakness from you may he take every sluggardness from you may he take every little folding of hands from you May he take every weakness from your body. May he propel you forward in the name of Jesus. May you arise and may you shine. May you see your destiny even before time. In the name of Jesus, may you receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We want to take our declaration. But before we, before we take our declarations, um, Mama Julie will uh, speak with those new ones who just came today. Uh, and to tell them what we stand for. Amen. Amen. So put your hands together as we receive our yearly declaration, 2004 declarations. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's take this declaration for this year. Let's go. This year, 2024, as I live in the end time waiting for the rapture, I pledge to witness for Christ by my words and actions and live an exemplary life as a true disciple of Christ, that the world will see my good works and glorify God, Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We love you and we pray for you all the time.